It's no secret that in video games, sometimes celebrities are the voice of characters, like Officer Frank Timpenny being voiced by the legendary Samuel L. Jackson in GTA San Andreas. But what's lesser known is that sometimes in video games, celebrities make cameos as their real life selves. From Snoop Dogg to Gary Coleman and even Michael Jackson, today we're gonna take a look at 10 celebrities who make cameos in games as their real life selves. If y'all enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for the algorithm. Let's go for 2,000 likes. That's a stretch because, well, I normally only upload Grand Theft Auto content. I want to upload other things that's not Grand Theft Auto content, but a lot of people on my channel won't watch anything that's not Grand Theft Auto content. So not many people are gonna see this video, but if you do, thank you. Number 10, Gary Coleman. He appears in Postal 2, which is a game where you're trying to just go about your business, but everybody wants to give you the business until you grab a weapon and start blowing them away. This includes the late Gary Coleman, RIP. In one of the game's missions, you have to go to the mall and get an autographed copy of Gary Coleman's book, what am I talking about? The Gary Coleman story to sell on eBay. Eventually, the cops arrive to arrest Coleman for unexplained reasons, where he then grabs a gun and he fires back, with weapons varying from assault rifles to grenades. You have the option to either run him off or shoot him, but if you fight, be careful, because Little Arnold is one of the strongest characters in the game, and since the cops will eventually gun him down anyway, it's almost worth not fighting him. Coleman actually returns in the game's expansion, Apocalypse Weekend, kind of, because your character is actually suffering from hallucinations, and he's imagining himself being attacked by dozens of zombified Gary Coleman clones. <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? Number 9, Shaquille O'Neal in UFC Undisputed 2010. An athlete appearing in sports games makes sense, right? Except when it isn't their sport. It's even weirder in cases like... NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal appearing in UFC Undisputed 2010. The athlete is someone who, even in their prime, wouldn't have fared well in this new sport at all. Shaq can actually be unlocked via a cheat code and is available for exhibition mode in the heavyweight division. Coming in at a 7 foot 1 inches tall, he's taller than virtually every UFC fighter in history and at 38 among the oldest as well. He's introduced by Bruce Buffer as a generic MMA fighter as opposed to a wrestler or judo fighter. Apparently calling him a master of Shaq Fu would have been too on the nose. Perhaps most hilariously of all, his official undisputed stats paint Shaq at a spry 265 pounds, and anyone who's seen Shaq knows that that's impossible, as he was at least 300 pounds in his prime. Who knew the video game camera takes away 50 pounds? I, I thought it was supposed to add it. Number 8, you can just sit us next to Carson Daly or actually Fred Durst in Fight Club. As a movie and a book, Fight Club is about how violence and toxic masculinity go hand in hand and are to blame for much of the misery in people's lives. As a game, Fight Club is about fighting. To further show how much the game missed the point of the story, you could unlock one of the worst singers ever and one of the greatest presidents ever as playable fighters. After completing story mode, you get to play through the game as Fred Durst, leader of the new metal group Limp Bizkit, and his game persona looks pretty spot on, aside from making him way too lean and muscular, and baffingly making him a martial arts master. Also, this is the guy most known for screaming lines like, Give me something to break, meaning he's everything the original story mocked. And then number seven, also in Fight Club, there's President Abraham Lincoln who's a playable character. Because in the film, Tyler Durden mentions how he wanted to fight the guy. And believe it or not, Abraham Lincoln actually had a reputation in real life as a rough and tumble tough guy wrestler in his youth. Because of his long arms and legs, he was virtually untouchable. So this actually makes more sense than Fred Durst. Not too much, but just a little bit. Number seven, Michael Jackson and Space Channel 5 Part 2. Space Channel 5 is and its sequel are Simon Says style rhythm games set 500 years in the future. They actually released in 1999. And somehow, despite, despite being way past the point where he would have died of old age, Michael Jackson appears in the game not just as himself, but as the savior of humanity. 
In the story, Michael Jackson saved the planet from aliens half a millennia ago using nothing but his amazing dance moves. Now, centuries later, he's Space Michael, the chief of Space Channel 5, and, well, is still just as incredible as a dancer then as he was, well, now, or way back then. He's one of the characters who helps you fend off an evil dance troupe called the Rhythm Rogues, all with the power of dance. He did the same thing as a lethal dancing robot car transformer guy in Moonwalker back in the 80s, but somehow this one makes a little more sense. And apparently, believe it or not, Michael Jackson actually wanted to be in Space Channel from the beginning, but he contacted the developers way too late, so they could only squeeze him in as a cameo. But by part two, he was promoted to the co-lead character, because if your dancing game includes Michael Jackson... Why wouldn't you make him anything but the man? Number five, Phil Collins in Grand Theft Auto Vice City Story. So if you were asked to list celebrities you'd expect to see in Grand Theft Auto, 80s soft rock icon Phil Collins likely wouldn't make your top 1000, and yet here he is. Not just gracing the 80s-centric Vice City stories, but actually being the first celebrity to ever play himself in a Grand Theft Auto game. For the appropriately named In the Air Tonight quest, you have to mow down gangsters who are out there to kill Phil Collins as payback for Collins' manager owing them millions. And once you successfully fended them off so that Collins can complete his concert, his manager pays the crime boss back his money anyway. Otherwise, he wouldn't stop trying to kill Collins. And your only mission ever would be protecting the Suciadio guy. Later, for 6000 in-game dollars, you can purchase a ticket to another Phil Collins show. This time, it lets you watch him sing In the Air Tonight, something you could otherwise only do by opening up YouTube or just listening to classic rock radio for more than 10 minutes. Number four, Keith David and special guest, Rowdy Roddy Piper. Kind of a special appearance here in Saints Row 4. So, the Saints Row series has been weird from the start, but Saints Row 4 kicks it up several notches with an alien race slapping you into a VR simulation of a recently destroyed Earth. There, literally anything can happen, including running into a wrestling legend and reenacting one of the few good movies as a wrestler ever made. Famed actor Keith David has long been part of the Saints Row series as well, but this was his first time ever playing himself in the series. At some point, your character discovers David has betrayed you due to being under alien mind control. And while tracking David down, you run into Rowdy Roddy Piper, R.I.P., Kilton All. And once Piper and David meet, they do what they do best as co-stars of the movie They Live, They Fight. Much like in their film, Piper knows the truth about the aliens and David is resistant. And, well, at least until Piper punches some sense back into him. Once that's over, you can call Piper into battle whenever you you want after enough dialogue Piper, Piper will realize that if Earth is destroyed and this is just VR then he's probably dead too. Number three, Cat Williams. I've talked about him on the channel before, but in Grand Theft Auto 4, there's a plethora of real-life comedians who appear during routines at the Split Sides Comedy Club. Alongside Cat Williams, you've got Ricky Gervais and a few others. And, well, Cat Williams is pretty cool, and so is Ricky Gervais, because these two guys actually play as their real-life selves in Grand Theft Auto 4, so this was always a nice surprise. Number two, Burt Reynolds, who appears in Saints Row 3. And, well, the first time you ever meet Reynolds, he's actually kissing a female cop at his desk. Typical. And that's only really the start of his amazing character and cameo. R.I.P. to Burt Reynolds as well. Uh, he goes on to appear, or he appeared previously in Vice City and Liberty City Stories. And, well, he seems to, like, play the same character type in every single game. And he does a great job at it. And number one, the reason that you're probably watching this video if you clicked on it for the thumbnail, Snoop Dogg in True Crime Streets of L.A. With his laid-back demeanor and knack for wacky comedy and hosting game shows, it's sometimes hard to remember that Snoop Dogg started out as a hardcore gangster rapper who at one point was charged and later acquitted with real-life murder. His appearance in True Crime Streets of L.A. acts as a good reminder of Snoop's troubled past. However, you can actually unlock Snoop by appropriately enough collecting 30 dog bones hidden throughout the game. Doing so will trigger Snoop's minigame Dog Patrol where you can control the dog father as he goes around L.A. solving crimes by shooting all the bad guys. You have one real-time hour to solve as many crimes as possible, and if you can solve at least 55, you earn the top dog status and the right to uh, brigizzle 
to all of your friendizzles in the hizzle. And if you somehow don't solve any, you earn the status as Lap Poodle, a wimp, even dogs peaceful, Rasputarian, alter ego, Snoop Lion, wouldn't feel bad about slapping around. 